Right, you guys, how to check if your PC can run Windows 11. Quite a few people have asked me to make this video. Now, this is the way you can check whether your PC is compatible with Windows 11. You can download Why Not Win 11. It's a little application you can run on your system, and it will basically tell you whether your system is compatible to run Windows 11. Now, Microsoft have their own tool, but they have pulled it from the internet because it was not working correctly. But this tool works pretty well, and I'll show you how it works. So basically, once you run it on your system, you can see here it's given me the OK for TPM version, storage available, secure boot, RAM install, disk partition type, and so on. It gives you all the criteria that you need to run uh, Windows 11 on your system. So you can see here boot method, UEFI. If you've got any sort of yellow or red, squares on here then your pc may not be compatible for windows 11 it will look something like this here let me just quickly show you uh, what it looks like on their website you can see here boot method legacy if you've got legacy mode enabled it won't work okay you won't be able to install windows 11 cpu compatibility if it's not currently listed on the compatible list on microsoft's website then it will show up yellow here like it shows you on this image. If you've not got GPT on your system using MBR, then you won't be able to install Windows 11 either. If you're not running Secure Boot, it's not going to work. Next up, I'll leave the links in the video description. I've showed you this before, but quite a few people missed it. So I wanted to bring it up in its own video. But this is the Windows 11 supported list for AMD processors. If your processor is not listed on this list, then it's not going to be compatible with Windows 11 as of right now. So that is the biggest problem you've got here. So if you've got a first generation Ryzen processor, i.e. Zen 1, they are not compatible with Windows 11 as of yet. Also, there's a supported list for Intel processors here. And yes, I know quite a few people are concerned about their processors not being listed here. If it's not listed as of yet, it will not be compatible with Windows 11. Now you can see it only goes up to eighth generation Intel processors here. Anything older than this, it will not be compatible with Windows 11 as of yet. If you look at the system requirements, you can see here, which is a bit silly, one gigahertz or faster, two or more cores. Well, they will be super old chips, and of course they're not supported. So why they've made it like that, I don't know. Uh, the RAM is four gigabytes. I would recommend six or up. Uh, storage, 64 gigabytes or larger storage. UEFI and secure boot capable. Uh, that means you have to have those enabled uh, on the BIOS. Otherwise, it will not install. TPM, which is your trusted platform module, version 2.0 you have to have that if you don't have it it's not going to allow you to install windows 11 graphics card it's got uh compatible with uh, directx 12 or later with wddm 2.0 driver and you've got your display on there as well and basically that is it so these are the minimal requirements that you're going to need to be able to install windows 11 so if you don't have the cpu that supports the TPM 2.0, then you're not going to be able to install uh, Windows 11 as of yet. They might reverse their decision. You can always check for TPM inside the PowerShell here by typing get dash TPM, and it will tell you that it's all true and working, and that's because I'm running Windows 11 on this system, and that's because this system is capable of running Windows 11. Now you can also do some checks here, which I've showed you before. Let me just quickly show you this one here, going down to the search and type in TPM and uh, .msc, and you can open this up and it will tell you everything is running fine and working because we've got this all enabled and you can see we're running Windows 11 here. So you will need to enable those in the bar. So I'll show you that right at the very end of the video. I've shown you that already, but I want to add it in this video so it's all in one video. So you can basically get yours up and running if you are compatible uh, with uh, the requirements there. So let's go ahead here and quickly type in here system information. If you want to find out what CPU you've got, you can type system information in the search here. The criteria you need here is the uh, CPU. Now, if you've got an AMD 
uh, second gen or third generation like Zen 2, Zen, Zen 3, you'll be fine. Also, you can see here the CPU is listed here. And a way to find out whether it's what generation it is, is the very first number on the CPU for Intel processors. You can see this is a 10th generation because it starts with 10. If it starts with 8 or 7, that'll be 8th generation, 7th generation, and so on. Anything below 8 will not run at Windows 11. Now, the BIOS mode also needs to be UEFI, and you need to have Secure Boot enabled, and you need to have CSM support uh, disabled on there, which is for your legacy support. That needs to be disabled for you to be able to run Windows 11. Now, what happens if you don't have TPM 2.0? Well, if your motherboard does support it and it does have a little pull on the board for you to uh, slot in a TPM module like these, then you can pick these up pretty cheaply. Now, you have to buy the right one for your motherboard and your motherboard must support it. Now, you shouldn't be paying any more than 8 to £15 pounds for these particular types of TPM modules for your motherboard. They're not worth any more than that. There's people already buying these up and price gouging people by making them uh, worth £100 and £150. I've seen the prices going up for ridiculous prices, and how much is it worth to you to buy one of these to get your uh, Windows 11 installed on the system? There is no guarantee that it's going to work anyway. So this is a typical motherboard that doesn't support uh, TPM 2.0, but you can see here there is a header on the board here which you can use uh, to put one of those modules on. And then what you'd need to do is put the module onto the motherboard here and you would need to then go into the BIOS and enable all of those features in the BIOS. You can check the motherboard manufacturer manual. You can download those from the website and it should tell you whether your motherboard does have a TPM uh, header on the board here. You can then go and buy the correct TPM module if you can find one and don't overpay because people are buying these up and price gouging. Now, also, I've read in the comment section that some people have said they've gone to the Windows Insider program with an unsupported CPU and managed to download and install Windows 11 and installed it on their system with an unsupported CPU. Now, I read an article somewhere, so I don't know how true this is, but uh, someone said in that article that Microsoft have relaxed the requirements, the system requirements, so you can run Windows Insider program uh, dev version of Windows 11 on your system so you can test it and have a play with it. Uh, but when it comes to the final release, it will require TPM 2.0. So my only concern here is if this is true and it's on your main system and you then lose the ability to roll back, what's going to happen? You're going to have to probably end up doing a fresh install. So be careful if that is the case and you are running this on your main computer uh, hoping that it's going to stay that way. I don't know the whole ins and outs of it. I don't know whether they're going to allow you to use it and continue to use it, but we'll have to wait and see. But that is that in a nutshell. Also, you're going to need to enable this feature. I've shown you this before, but I wanted to add it in this video so people know. Secure boot mode needs to be on. You need to enable this feature. And also what you need to do here, this is for an Intel processor, and the same thing will go for an AMD processor. Inside the settings and miscellaneous here, you will see uh, an option here for Intel Platform Trusted Technology, uh, PTT, and you need to enable this feature. This needs to be enabled. And also in the Trusted Computing here, you need to go inside here, and there's an option inside here that you need to enable as well. This is what we could see in our PowerShell when we did that command. It showed all this information to say it's enabled. But you can see here TPM 2.0 device found and it's turned on. Security device support is enabled. You need to enable this feature, otherwise you're not going to be able to use Windows 11. This is for your TPM uh, 2.0. And the same thing goes for the CSM support. This needs to be disabled on uh, AMD systems and also Intel systems. So you need to make sure that Secure Boot is on, TSM support is disabled, and you need to enable the uh, PTT, and also you need to enable uh, the TPM 2.0. For AMD BIOSes, it's called FTPM, and you need to enable that version in there. It will be under the Trusted Computing section. I've showed you that in a previous video. I'm not going to show it in this one, 
but basically you just have to replicate the same things in there apart from PTT. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. That's basically how to check if your PC can run Windows 11. I will leave all the links and information in the video description to help you check whether your system is compatible. Remember, Microsoft make changes all the time and they can make some allowances and changes to some of the CPU lists that you see there as of today. So bear that in mind in the future if you're watching this video. Now remember, Microsoft have the power to make changes to their system requirements and they can do that at any time. So we just have to give them time and they may actually make allowances for uh, slightly older CPUs like the seventh generation and so on. So we just have to wait and see what the end results are. Anyway, but that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. A big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.